Hi, my name is Allison Tiemann, and I want to talk about my thoughts on the Kavanaugh hearing. As far as I'm concerned, this media circus shouldn't have happened. This accusation against Kavanaugh has been brought forward publicly without corroborative evidence. This is grotesque and unsavory and reeks of political gamesmanship. What I'm going to talk about is this entire fiasco and what it means for the future of our civilization and why I believe conservatives are culpable in creating a climate in which destroying men via their sexuality has become commonplace. Feminism is Christianity minus God. What do I mean when I say that? Now, first off, I want you to bear in mind that Christianity as a faith is separate from Christianity as a social technology. I'm not talking about Christianity as a faith. That topic is between you and your God or whomever you consider to be his representative, if you're Christian. Christianity as a social technology is how Christianity as a widespread belief system works or does not work when informing the creation of a functioning society. Second, I want you to note I'm not saying feminism is Christianity, because a belief in God is central to the Christian faith. When you remove God, you also remove all of his edicts enumerated in the Bible, and you don't really have Christianity anymore. So what are you left with? You're left with a mythology, a narrative, a story. You're left with a virgin birth and a virgin savior who sacrificed himself to purge humanity of their sins. This mythology doesn't present male sexuality in a positive light. In fact, it paints male sexuality in a very negative light as a vector of sin into the act of procreation. As St. Augustine, an influential figure in the church said, the penis is a demon rod and semen is toxic glue that renders the sexual act impure. Now, when you include God as a counterbalancing force, men have a role as leaders of their communities, families, and churches, and their sexuality has at least minimal value as generative, be fruitful and multiply. But again, we're talking about what Christianity collapses into when God is removed. What Christianity collapses into when you remove God is the church of women worsting. I hate getting bogged down in the mire of arguing identity. So where I can, I create awkward portmanteaus that point to actions as the problem rather than labels. Women worsting is simply when women are seen as having it worse along every conceivable metric. It's the deification of female victimhood, creating a religion around female victimhood, complete with orthodoxy, heresy, and piety. Believe her. Me too. Yes, all women. Not all men. Why didn't I report? Rape culture is when, when I was, she persisted nasty woman. On and on and on. Fundamentalist women worsters believe society was created by men to force access to women's sexuality, meaning society itself is rape. But there are also casual and lay women worsters who tend to believe things like men need to be taught not to rape, and rape jokes encourage rape, and while men can be rape, rape of women is more important. When you target the behavior rather than the label, it becomes apparent that women worsting is something that isn't just done on the left. There are also many, many, many women worsters on the right. In brief, women worsters deify women's victimhood. In particular, they deify women's claims that they have been sexually violated by men. If a woman goes into a courtroom, any courtroom in the United States of America, and says, that man attacked me, that's enough. That's evidence. When the woman says it, it's evidence. This woman worster is literally decrying any sort of due process or assumption of innocence for the accused as misogyny, victim blaming, and heresy. She's deified women's victimhood. Any claim by a woman to victimhood must be believed without question. They want women to be able to convict men of sexual crimes without the accuser's story being questioned, without requiring corroborative evidence, without any recourse to legal protection for men. Straight to the public lynching, literal or figurative. Each successive generation of women worsting gets more radical, starting with all heterosexual sex is likely rape, moving through all heterosexual sex is rape if the woman says so, and ending with all heterosexual sex is rape, even if the woman says it wasn't. Compare the Kavanaugh hearing to the Thomas Clarence. The drumbeat of women worsting has grown louder and more urgent, the social noise more intense. In the context of a godless but powerful mythology that sees men's sexuality as a vector of sin into the world, this all makes sense. Leftists, feminists, and women worsters are all toxically pious when it comes to seeing the female body as a vessel of purity and the male body as a vector of sin. To them, men defile women's bodies. Men's sexuality is a corruption, a disease. Men are presumed to be guilty of having infected women with their vile fluids. 
Fundamentalist women worshipers would simply say, yes, men's sexuality is innately degraded and degrading. All other women worshipers would likely profess that this is far from the case. The sanctification of the untouched virginal female isn't what's driving their actions. But then look at what they say is the worst way to shame an alleged female rape victim. She asked for it. The worst way to shame a woman is to say that she consented to sex with a man, that she wanted sex with a man. Women worsters will say they are sex positive, yet everywhere they are making it harder and harder for women to say yes to men's sexuality. They are at war with women's ability to consent to men. They want to narrow it to the smallest aperture possible, if not cut it off entirely. Now women can't consent to men by simply submitting to what they want. They have to engage in acrobatics to demonstrate their consent. Women can't just avoid saying no. They have to launch into Shakespearean sonnets about their ecstasy and desire. And it gets worse and worse each year. Women's window of consent narrowing under the onslaught of feminist legal battering. Women's agency and sex smothered by feminism's heavy, sweaty, all-enveloping, smegma-lined dogma. But I guess that's a good rape, right? All of this speaks to a palpable subconscious disgust at the idea of women saying yes to sex with men. A contemptuous incredulity that a woman could possibly desire being filthied and corrupted by her male sexual partner. Women worsters want to turn as much heterosexual sex into rape as possible because they find women's consent to the demon rod morally abhorrent. Let's prove the supposition by offering the contrapositive. If women worsters believe that women desired men with abandon and gusto, then the default assumption would be that every sexual encounter was consensual and every accused man was innocent until proven guilty. You know, due process, on a visceral level. All of their actions in the legal realm of sexual assault point to the belief that women do not consent to men as a default. The emotional basis of such an assumption is the idea that men defile and women are pure. And this, my friends, is at the heart of Christian mythos. So here are the top four commonly held beliefs by conservatives that lead to our lynching culture. Number one, women make men moral. Many Christians believe that women are somehow the ones who elicit positive behavior in men, supporting and taking care of their families, protecting women, being cooperative and spiritual. This isn't true. Human men have evolved an inborn set of instincts to provide and protect for their children, mate, and social group. They have evolved a highly advanced set of skills to cooperate with each other in the protection and provision of their social groups. They respond on a hormonal level to women's distress and have an inborn aversion to harming women or children. Human men's sexuality, on a basic biological level, is uniquely tied to social and emotional intimacy for all healthy, normal men. Emotional warmth is essential to their sexual response. Human men are also pair bonders and have evolved a hormonal system that facilitates sexual devotion as well as paternal care. Women are responsible for none of these positive characteristics in men, except that they evolved based on the choices of hairy female hominids. They are all innate to the nature of human men. What women do is channel this marvelous set of male instincts into the greater work of society. They say to their sons and husbands, this is the social group you should invest in, and men do. Whether that social group is a Christian one, a Jewish one, the United States, or the Roman Empire. So instead of believing that women make men moral, step away from the chauvinism and recognize that while women may channel men's instincts into the greater work of society, men's magnificence of soul is innate. Number two, men are rapey. I've lost count of how many times I've read or heard conservatives say things, well, what do you expect? You flashed your ankle at a man and he turns into a rapist. Normal, healthy men do not rape. I repeat, normal, healthy men do not rape. The largest single causal factor for a boy to go on to sexually abuse others is having been raped by a woman. After that, the largest causal factors are sexual abuse plus neglect. And amazingly, it's only 10% of sexually abused boys who go on to become abusers themselves. Well, amazing if you think that men are innately rapey. Rape and sexual abuse are so foreign to normal healthy men and boys, even when they are subject to it in their formative years, they rarely go on to do it to others. Do not insult men by saying things that suggest men rape as a matter of course. 
or that men and boys need to be taught consent when what is actually happening is that men and boys who rape are taught to seek out rape by having been raped, mainly by women. Pornography, rape jokes, rape culture, and flashed ankles do not make men into rapists. Having been sexually violated by women, sexually violated and subject to neglect, or subject to extreme abuse creates rapists. Nothing else. Number three, only men rape and its little brother, men can't be raped. As a corollary to number two, women also rape. In fact, when children are raped by women, they suffer worse outcomes, and often the abuse itself is more disturbingly violent. Women are not angels, not angels in the kitchen, the home, or the playroom. For three years in a row now, we found that men are raped at the same rate as women in the past year. This is according to a center of disease control study. The majority of these men are raped by women, according to the most accurate statistic on who is doing the raping. There is a huge epidemic of unacknowledged sexual violence against men perpetrated by women. When we look at the violence men engage in, realize that none of it is innate to men. Normal, healthy men do not rape, they do not batter, they do not shoot up schools. It's time for conservatives to realize that when men are violent, they are reflecting the violence done to them. When you concede this, you've lost the moral high ground to the women worsting feminists. You've essentially agreed that feminism since the 50s, well, not since the 50s, since it was the 80s that we've recently discovered were the height of female oppression now. In fact, it's really been since 2006, in the last 12 years in the West, that feminism has turned our society from one of abject subjugation and denigration of women into a place where women sometimes get thrown a bone. When you agree with that framing, with their framing, that men oppress women, you've lost the argument as a conservative. In the past, conservatives at least had an intuitive, if not completely conscious and aware understanding of how the dance between men's roles and women's roles created society. They would understand the absurdity of saying that women are oppressed by the societies that they have a powerful role in creating. See women channeling men's instincts in point one. I'm saying women as a group, of course, individual women with individual goals and drives might find the social standards expected of them oppressive, case in point myself, but as a group, women are not oppressed by the societies they shape and inspire. The unintended consequence of conservatives bowing to this thought-terminating cliché of women's oppression by society is that it renders any moral opposition to feminism and women worsting dead in the water. Right out of the starting gate, it's conceding the idea that everywhere feminism isn't is a hellhole of abuse for women. How the hell are you going to fight back if you hand them your moral imperium? If you're essentially saying, yeah, we suck, we hate women, make us better, feminists. You know, us conservatives, just we're just really bad people until we see the feminist light. You need to question these beliefs where they occur because they strengthen a culture where lynching a man on a woman's word alone makes visceral sense. And you need to oppose this culture not just when you, as a conservative, are facing a weaponized accusation of rape in a cutthroat game of politics. You need to oppose these beliefs because the women worsters are not going to stop. They have the moral reins of society. They've cowed you into bolting for a foxhole every time they trot out rape. The only thing that will stop this regression to the lowest common denominator is a muscular moral courage and the strength to stand by the worth of men to call out casual assumptions about why men rape, and to remind everyone that the word rapist is not gendered. The reason why I'm criticizing conservatives is because at least I feel like I can get somewhere with a few of them who aren't themselves succumbing to women worsting. Maybe. I don't even know what to do with the people who are spiraling down into madness, deifying women's victimhood. Just to give you an idea how bad this will get, God as a concept is not a moving target. God made his wants known in the Bible and then buggered off. That's why it makes sense to outsource the moral axis of society to an abstraction. Abstractions rarely make their opinions known. And when they do make their opinions known, it's usually in the form of a miracle. And miracles are hard to come by. This rarity creates social stability. But under the Church of Women Worsting, every generation sees a new beachhead established for saving women. And a new set of perils is identified that women must be saved from. 
Women's victimhood is constantly moving target. It functions as a universal social solvent. Everything will eventually be reduced down to how it makes women victims and then deconstruct it to save them. Snow removal, sperm banks, horticulture, physics, the American political apparatus, every institution of government, academia, and business. It's all going to get sucked into the sinkhole of women worsting. And I have no idea how to heal the people locusting through our civilization of this madness before they fucking destroy it. And worse, there is no one in politics to oppose the rise of the church of women worsting. Conservatives don't like it when democratics turn its moral weaponry on them in the political arena, but they don't want to do the work to develop the moral chops to fight back in the cultural arena. What conservatives won't see and need to see is the human cost of all of this. In my time researching false rape accusations, something has become very apparent to me. Men who experience a false rape accusation have difficulty with sexual and emotional intimacy. They find themselves unable to trust women. They experience post-traumatic stress disorder. They may start to self-medicate through drug abuse, experience depression, suicidal feelings, and eventually kill themselves. There are so many stories of false accusations that end with a man dead by his own hand. Kavanov has been erratic, upset, angry, Many have said he appears guilty or unsympathetic, whereas Ford is a very sympathetic victim. When the Allies invaded Germany in World War II, they often found the Nazis, dignified and self-possessed in defeat, more sympathetic than the victims of the regime who had been twisted by starvation, imprisonment, and torture into animalistic desperation. Such is the way with many abusers. They can appear to be perfect victims because they aren't suffering the ugly and disturbing effects of trauma. That's why rather than reaching for the most sympathetic, we need to reach to evidence to determine innocence or guilt. If Kavanaugh is confirmed, conservatives will crow about their victory and ignore the lesson here and continue to allow the power of the Church of Women Worsting to grow until it is powerful enough that it gets what it wants next time. Remember Thomas Clarence, Remember how much worse it's gotten. Even if Kavanaugh is confirmed, the damage to him is done. He's already said that he may lose his ability to teach and coach due to these accusations, which will hang over him like a pall for the rest of his life. Now one out of every two people Kavanaugh meets on the street will think he's a sexual predator. Can you imagine living like that? If he is confirmed, Kavanaugh most likely won't become. If he is confirmed, Kavanaugh most likely won't become a crusader for the falsely accused. Instead, he'll ghost through the rest of his life in an invisible prison, like any other survivor of a socially acceptable sexual assault. Wondering why it's so easy to think of killing himself, why he's having trouble being intimate with his wife, why every time he's alone with a woman, his skin crawls and his stomach drops in terror, and there will be no answers for him if he experiences those things like many other survivors of false accusation abuse. No answer how his sexuality could have been treated with such reckless and malicious disregard, not just by the left, but by the right and by the system itself. No answers for him except here in the most marginalized political group in society. If we cared about men's sexuality, if we recognized it not as a vector of sin into the world, but an important part of what makes us unique and uniquely social as human beings. If we cherished it and realized just how fragile and precious a resource it is, we would not have subjected Kavana to this based on an accusation alone with no corroborative evidence. Our men are one of only two species that have this high a level of paternal instinct, cooperative drive, and warm, loving, companionable sexuality. If we recognize male sexuality as not just something good, but something that pulls us above the bestial, we would recognize how essential it is for us to protect it from violations like the one we've just witnessed. That's why due process and innocent until proven guilty is so important. That's why these allegations should not be subject to public tribunal without a shred of corroborative evidence. Set aside all the systems analysis. It's important so that we don't cause further harm to the men who rely on us to protect them. We have just witnessed the public sexual torture and humiliation of what is, in all likelihood, an innocent man, based on nothing more than what's increasingly looking like a woman's invented story. 
That's barbaric! Conservatives have lost the culture war. They no longer see any fight but a political one. And they don't want to take to heart what men's rights activists have been saying for decades now. We will suffer the social and political cost of misandry until we recognize the personal cost. My fear is that instead of questioning how their own attitudes contribute to our current lynching culture, conservatives will likely adopt the tactics of women worsters. Once both sides are battling over their respective women's sexual honor, as it were, that will create a sinkhole that will swallow up our entire civilization. The dark age after the fall of bronze was the same kind of sinkhole. Everyone fighting over the sexual honor of their women to the point where no one could stop fighting long enough to create anything resembling the advanced societies that came before. Or conservatives could question their own complicity in the man-hating beliefs women worsters rely upon to push their narratives about women's violated sexual honor. I'm not going to hold my breath. Welcome to the dark age after the fall of iron. Find yourself a hilltop and a stash of flint. We're most likely going through a hard Ragnarok-style reset.